So uh, this is the aircraft, so despite everything that's going on at the moment, still ready and available to respond to emergencies. We've got all the personal protective equipment that we need carried on board in our bags uh, to still attend patients the same as we would have done before, which is excellent and I hope reassuring. So this is a EC135 T2 Plus is the make and design of the helicopter. It's a twin engined aircraft, which I'll come around and kind of point out to you. I think that's important to say, because it means, so there and there, that means that um, if one of the engines, heaven forbid, fails, then we've got another one that's perfectly serviceable, can still fly us around and um, get us to somewhere safe. So if we were over the city uh, or over water or something, we'd be able to get somewhere safe and be down the field, ready to be picked up. Um, so I'll just do, do a little circle. And then uh, we'll have a little look inside. You can see the tail rotor there is protected. You know, some of them don't have this uh, protection around it. But it's still very dangerous, which is why we get, I hope you understand, quite nervous if anyone approaches the aircraft when we land, particularly from the back. Um, so this is where the pilot seats in the front right. So this here is called a cyclic, which if you imagine in 3D makes the helicopter tilt forwards, backwards, tilts left and tilts right. And this handbrake looking thing here is the collective. So you pull up for more power, down for less power essentially. Uh, and what that does is actually turns the, it tilts the blade um, so that it grabs more air. So if you imagine putting your hand out of a car window flat and it cuts through the air and if you tilt your hand then um, get more resistance and so that's just a way of pushing more air down through the disc and getting more lift. These black screens are normally lit up when the battery is on uh, so they come up with lots of information and you've got the um, analog backups should the batteries fail so it's always backups. Here's mostly radio systems but lots of buttons and knobs and dials and then we'll go around to where the paramedic sits. So for Great Western Air Ambulance our paramedics are trained as technical crew members which means we have to do a few weeks training um, to understand the workings of the aircraft, help the pilot and navigate. So this is where I am sitting today and put my iPad for navigation up there and I've got my own screens and I can talk to ambulance control through that. <laughs> Here is the bit that I'm sure most of you are most curious about. So you can see not a huge amount of space, particularly here where the roof drops a bit. Um, so some of our taller staff do have to crouch down a little bit, but it is nicely spaced for compared to some aircraft that are in use. Um, and this is so response bags and things um, on the stretcher. When we take a patient, we move all the kit around, which means that they are where the kit um, is now. So red bag is our main pri primary bag, so it's got all the immediate action stuff, things to keep you breathing and stop you bleeding. Um, and recently in the front we've changed, so we've got a lot of personal protective equipment, uh, as I'm sure you've seen lots on the telly. This is a monitor defib, so this can give the electric shocks to restart the heart and cardiac arrest, but it also gives blood pressure, heart rate, um, oxygen levels. It checks the carbon dioxide that you breathe out, which means we can confirm that the airway is in your breathing pipe, your trachea, and not your esophagus, because uh, you only find the carbon dioxide in the lungs. In here is our Lucas, which is an automatic chest compression um, device which is really useful uh, for doing chest compressions if you have to in flight um, or if it's a particularly tight space or if it's been going on a while and the green bag contains our ventilator which again a bit of a hot topic at the moment I'll show you and these were bought entirely through charitable funds as a lot of our equipment is they are not cheap 
very glad to have them. Uh, they're definitely an advancement on our last one. Um, the previous model was archaic really um, and I think this is going to deliver some excellent care for patients who are unfortunate enough to be put on this. There you go. Unassuming that I'm sure you can appreciate how expensive these things are. Um, here are the brackets then, so that one is for the ventilator where we can put the bracket. It shows us how much oxygen we've got and we can plug in there. This one's for our monitor, so it's all ergonomically designed uh, for us to be able to see really easily and quickly. You can see these grooves are where the stretch is, so we pull out that um, slides back into position. We can put that in a number of positions, either if you want to pull the patient closer to me to do something or keep them in a, a position because the pilot needs to know where the centre of gravity is and if you move a person then that shifts the centre of gravity. And around here we've got our spares, so some lights in this box, um, spare equipment and more personal protective equipment there. In the orange bag we've got uh, things like splints, vacuum splints and head blocks 